Gee, Mr. Frampton sure assigns a lot of homework. Hey, Josh, want to play Risk, the game of world domination? Oh boy, would I ever! It beats this crap! Come on, David, deal those cards. Oh, Jesus! All right, I get Germany and... Hey, what's this? You get every other country? I only get Germany? Yeah, Josh, that's the role of the banker. Ever played this game before? Hey there, fellas. Are you playing Risk, the game of world domination? More or less. <laughs> wow, my son really sucks at this game. You're grounded! <laughs> and we only started. That's not fair. David cheated. That's it. You're double grounded. I'm canceling Christmas. But, Dad... I can cancel Hanukkah and Kwanzaa too, Josh. But we don't celebrate those. No, Josh, I'm canceling all of it. No Christmas for anyone, and it's your fault! <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. This reminds me of when I was growing up during World War II. Do you guys know much about World War II? Not a whole lot. It began with Germany's government being taken over by a man named Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. Gee, Dad, you think we've been living under a rock? Josh! Sorry, sorry. Please continue. While Hitler was a very ambitious man and began invading his neighboring countries, one of the first to fall to Germany's vast military was Poland on September the 1st, 1939. Great idea, Dad! A mere two days later, France and Britain declared war on Germany. 48 hours later. We'll see about that, Josh. Shit! For the next eight months, the Allies waited for Germany to make a move. Comrade Pavlov, why are we out here? The Germans are coming, and we're gonna be right here to stop them. Whatever you say, comrade. Any second now, keep your eyes peeled. Peeling eyes? Wasn't that time called the phony war? Why yes, many people called it that because of the little to no military activity. Phony? Just like Josh's gameplay. What's this, David? You come into my home, and you attack me with your words. That hurts. The phony wars, eh? Or as the French say, Le Sitzkrieg. That's German, David. Then the day came, April the 9th, 1940. Germans invaded Denmark and Norway. Denmark surrendered in about two hours. Norway, on the other hand, resisted for two months, before surrendering to the overwhelming invasion, thus becoming under Nazi rule. There was a Norwegian military officer and politician at the time by the name of Vidkun Quisling. He was very involved in the Norwegian Nazi government and good friends with Hitler himself, even sharing Nazi ideals and partaking in the Holocaust. He founded the Norwegian puppet government known as the Quisling Regime and assumed the role of Minister President of Norway from 1942 to 1945. Isn't a Quizno someone who collaborates with an enemy occupying force? No, that's a sandwich. Is it a Quinsling? That's a piece of meat between two pieces of bread? Damn it, David, that's still a sandwich! Isn't a Queensland somebody who collaborates with an enemy occupying force? Why yes, David, that term was coined after Vidkun Quisling and his actions of betrayal. Just like lasagna betrays me, you gotta talk about your sits creep. I got a shits creep! <laughs> the battle only lasted three months, until Norway became under complete Nazi control. Their forces spread. Just after one day of bombing in Rotterdam, the Netherlands surrendered. Soon after, it was Belgium who surrendered to the Nazis with little to no fight. The German territory grew. Well, I had a bad start to this game, but soon all of Europe will be mine! We'll see about that, Josh. <laughs> France and Britain demonstrated their decision to end appeasement and aid Poland. But the democracies didn't do anything to help the Polish in any material way. During this time of non-counterinsurgency, Morale was low, the blackouts, the rationing of food, the evacuation of children far away from home. The closing of places of entertainment all became irritations. New emergency laws and protocols passed by the government 
were incorporated in everyday life. These all sap the moral strength of both the people and the army. Sap, just like Josh's gameplay. What's his problem? Why is he doing this to me? He's just hurting my feelings. It wasn't just the procrastination of the Allies that caused the phony war, but the Germans didn't want to rush things either. Many German generals thought that they weren't ready for war and hoped that war would just wither away. It also happened that the weather of that winter was some of the most severe of living memory. Weather sure has been dodgy lately. Oh, shit! Whoa! <laughs> it was only in the ocean the war seemed real. German strategy was to attack enemy ships wherever possible, using boat surface raiders and U-boats. It wasn't until several merchant ships were destroyed by the Nazis that British Prime Minister Winston Churchill demanded a search and destroy patrol to be launched against the German submarines. You sunk my battleship! Then came the Battle of Dunkirk. Hey, I know about the Battle of Dunkirk. I learned all about it while busting my ass to go throw together the Socials Project. On May 10, 1940, German forces quickly took Belgium and France. Soon after arriving in France, German tanks had reached the English Channel. One of the field commanders for the Nazi German army in this siege was Urban Rommel, commander of the 7th Panzer Battalion. Rommel would later come to be known as the Desert Fox for his successes in the North Africa campaign. Desert Fox? Like the North African Fennec Fox? Let me see that. So you're saying that the feared German military commander is a cute animal with big ears? Well that's too bad Josh, because did you know the Fennec Fox has such precise hearing that it can hear the heartbeats of small insects underneath the desert sand? The Allied forces were soon surrounded in the French port of Dunkirk. The Battle of Dunkirk was the defense and evacuation of the British and Allied forces. Evacuation? Does Josh have to use the bathroom again? The Allies had escaped before the Germans captured the town. Upon learning the Allied plan, the British Navy rounded up every boat capable of navigating the English Channel. Hundreds of fishing boats, pleasure craft, and ferries joined the naval and merchant ships as they headed across the Channel for the beaches of Dunkirk. Two days later, the German Air Force bombed the port of Dunkirk, making the escape by the Allies even more difficult. On June 4th, the evacuation was finally completed. Nearly 340,000 Allied soldiers were brought to the safety of Britain. The German army continued its sweep through France. The French army was no match for the powerful German troop. On June 22, 1940, northern France surrendered now with the Nazi collaborator Philippe Pétain as the premier of the new French state. Don't forget Josh, I worked on this project too. And this new occupied part of France was called Vichy France, led by Philippe Pétain in 1940 to 1944. Most overseas French colonies were once under Vichy or German control, but Allied invasions of North Africa took over one colony after another. In London in September 1941, Charles de Gaulle, leader of the Southern Free France, formed the Free French National Council, with himself as president. It was an all-encompassing coalition of resistance forces. By early 1942, the Fighting French Movement, as it was now called, gained rapidly in power and influence. It overcame the Nazis in Syria and Lebanon. Actually, resistance movements during World War II occurred in every occupied country by a variety of means, ranging from non-cooperation, disinformation, and propaganda, to hiding crash pilots, and to even outright warfare and the recapturing of towns. Well, that's pretty neat. But was there anyone there out there trying to stop Hitler, not just his army, from occupying their country? Why, of course. The Allies of World War II, such as Poland, USA, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the British Commonwealth, all participated in resisting the Germans in some form or another, such as providing resources and military aid. Wow, thanks a lot Josh's dad. We really learned a lot today, didn't we? But what happened after Germany seized France? Who was Hitler's next target? 
Well, boys, you'll find out next in the Battle of Britain. <laughs>